Welcome back to the channel. Let's go build something cool. All right, at this point, we have let it sit overnight. We gotta tighten some control arms before we can send it over for alignment. And so that's what we're gonna do. And the trick for that is in the rear, you put it on jack stands, but we got a couple other tricks here. Um, you can slide under the thing and fight it if you want to. I don't like that. We are currently down on the ground, but I have not rolled it yet. And we are at 39 and a half at the fender which is way too much. But watch this. We're just gonna roll it backwards and forwards and get the suspension out of a bind because right now the tires are pushing it up because it was on jacks. What was 39 and a half is now 38 and a quarter. That's a valid bit of information. And in the rear, We're at 39. 38 and an eighth. So what that gives us is about three quarters of an inch of rake, maybe seven eighths, but that's right where we want it. Let's double check our side to side. A little high on this side. 39 and a half. What were we over here? 39 and a quarter. So we're pretty close, quarter inch side to side on a KDSS car. It's pretty close, it's pretty close, pretty close. But I think what we're gonna wanna do, this side's at 39 and three quarter. And this side's at, wait, 38 and, Jesus, can't brain today. 38 and a quarter. Driver's side is at 38 and three quarter. So we need to come down a half inch on the driver's side. Not a problem, easy to do. That is not uncommon. Um, we don't wanna go up on the passenger side because I've already got my height leveled out from the rear where I want it. Now, what you gotta remember is you are corner weighting. So as we reduce the preload on the spring in the left front, the right rear will come up. Currently have a quarter inch side to side in the back and in the front, we're gonna bring it down a quarter of an inch, which should probably be, bring that rear up about an eighth. So that'll get us within an eighth left to right, which is very nice. All right, so I'm gonna yank this wheel off Real quick, we're just gonna throw the jack under it. We're gonna yank the wheel off. Now, the lever ratio on the coilover to the arm is about two to one. So if we wanna come down a half an inch on the ride height, that means we need to try to come down about a quarter inch on our spring preload, roughly. So we're gonna shoot for that and we're gonna be pretty close. Freaking KDSS, man, every time, every time. They're never dead on. Also, if you're running a nitro shock where you don't have a threaded body and you need a quarter of an inch, what you wanna do is go up on the opposite corner. So if we needed, say we needed that quarter inch on, or that half inch on the driver's front to come down, it actually means you would need to preload the right rear. So you would actually need to raise the right rear to offset for that. Otherwise, you've gotta have a fixed height in the front and you can only keep going up. There's not really an adjustment there. Something to keep in mind. It's one of the reasons I prefer the threaded body coilover setup with the IMS. They also ride a lot smoother than the nitro shocks in my experience. I don't have long-term experience with the nitro shocks, but I do know that these are killer. So this is the reason we put the lubricant on the threads, the anti-seize and the grease on the bottom of the shock color. You never wanna try to adjust coilovers with the weight on the vehicle. These don't have very much preload at all in them by comparison, and the suspension's at full droop with everything loose uh, as far as the, the bushings and such goes. So it's okay to make an adjustment at this point, especially if you're going down, so reducing preload. So if you'll remember, we set this from the bottom 
of the coil to the center of the bolt hole at eight and three eighths. However, you can't see the bottom of the coil the way the coil's clocked, which is what I talked about previously. But what I like to do is get myself a reference point right here where these meet. Depending upon how it's clocked, you can tuck the tape measure in here. And we are currently at seven and let's see, we'll go right here. We're at eight inches. So we want to come down a quarter of an inch. Now, Dobinson's includes spanner inches, but I will tell you that they're a little short and they're a little thick and they're kind of hard to use. So we'll put a link in the description to these. These are the ones I've been using for a couple years now. They seem to work pretty good. So we loosen the lower collar and you want to come down to about where you think you want it. So that's about a quarter of an inch. And then our top collar is the one that actually has the weight on it. So we'll start loosening it. Now when your coilovers have miles on them, you're not gonna be able to do this as easily. So a lot of times you're gonna have to take them off and use a strut compressor. And they're a little stiff till they get moving, but it's okay. It's not gonna jack anything up as long as you lubricated it properly. Lube is essential. That's what she said. Once we get a little bit of pressure off of them, they'll go a little easier. Now you might ask yourself why I didn't just go ahead and set these a quarter inch lower from the get-go. And I thought about it, but the thing is, this KDSS kind of acts a little different on most of these vehicles. It's not cut and dry. It's not something that you can just, you know, apply the same rule to every visit, every car. Um, it tends to be a little hit or miss. Plus, customers have varying loads in their vehicles. Some people just have, you know, a duffel bag in the back and other people have a fridge and drawer systems and all that crap. So I like to see where the rear lands before I set the front because the front is where the only real adjustment is unless you're putting spring packers in the back. Okay, we made our adjustment. And we're set a quarter inch lower than we were. Let's check it. And you do have to roll it back and forth. Okie dokie, so now we are within about 3 sixteenths all the way around, left to right, roughly. KDSS, it's gonna catch you every time. At this point, we are going to tighten up our upper control arms. We're gonna snug our lower control arms. We're gonna go around the back. We're gonna tighten everything down where it's supposed to be on our control arms. And then it's headed for alignment, which luckily for me is across the hall. Ha ha ha, that's it. If you are doing this at home and you need to drive it to an alignment shop, what I normally do is set the camber at maximum on the lower control arms. So maximum negative camber, and then loosen the tie rod adjuster and just look down the edge of the tire until it's basically flat with the back tire. Just catch a sight line. Kind of like, you wanna catch a sight line kind of like that. As you can see, it's towed in a little bit. But if you can square it up, if you can get it pretty close to square, you're gonna be in good shape at least to drive a few miles to go get the thing aligned. Always get it aligned. Lock down your lower control arms, lock down your upper control arms, and lock down the rear control arms. Otherwise, you're gonna have cracking and popping. All right, guys, our GX is all finished up from being aligned, and here she is.
Kyle, thank you so much for joining us for our in-depth Jobinson's IMS suspension. This is the tail end of part five. We are always happy to have you all along. We did these videos a little different than how we normally do. If you like this kind of format, jump in the comments. Tell us what you think. If you didn't like this kind of format, jump in the comments. Tell us what you think. If you've got anything in particular that you need to see a how-to on, jump in the comments. Tell us what you think. We sure appreciate it. Be sure you like, subscribe, share, and we'll uh, see you on the next one.